The download speed on Bristow is currently 780 megabits per second, and the upload speed is 767 megabits per second. So we have had fiber in the home, wow, that's really close. So we have had fiber in the home for more than a month, and I'm pretty impressed with the results. But I'm not the only one that lives here. Hey, babe. Yeah, hey, babe, what do you think of our fiber internet? I don't notice any difference than the last internet we had. <laughs> I don't know. Was well, I think I have a solution. So this is the Deco AX1800 Superior Mesh Wi-Fi system. Now this does have Wi-Fi 6, which is a new standard that will allow you to have faster speeds on your Wi-Fi compatible devices. So here we have a Wi-Fi dead zone killer. So there's only going to be one network that your devices will connect to and it will seamlessly flow between them. You can connect up to 150 devices. That's super important with the amount of Wi-Fi devices that I have with my smart home. You have faster Wi-Fi speeds up to 1800 megabits per second. Then you have seamless roaming and you have easy setup through the Deco app. Now this will work with a home that has 5,800 square foot. If you have a bigger home than that, you can just buy extra points to increase the range. And so this would be ideal with a home that has four to six bedrooms, which I have five bedrooms in my house. So I think this is definitely going to do the job. And then here it is compatible with Amazon Assistant. And up at the top, it does show that there is a two year warranty. And over here on the side, you can see a few more of the specifications if you are interested. And then we will be using the Deco app to set this up. This will work on Apple as well as Android devices. So here we have our three different points. To set this up, we will need to install the app and create an account. We will need to turn off our modem and also our old router. And then we need to plug this into our modem. So this is not a modem. You will need to have some modem that brings the internet into your home and then you will plug it into this, and then we will finish the setup in the app. Let's go ahead and pull these out. So each Wi-Fi point comes with a power port, and then a ethernet in, and an ethernet out, which is really nice to have. And then here it comes with three power cords for each point, and then it does come with one ethernet cable that you will use to plug this into your modem. Now, because each of these have two ethernet ports, you can use what's called ethernet backhaul. So you could have each of them plugged into a switch, and we'll cover that, but first we're just going to do this all wirelessly. So with this first one, it is going to plug directly into my modem. I'm just gonna do it with this right now. Um, I'll show you my full setup at home in just a bit. And then we're going to plug that one in. And then we are going to plug in the points. Now we're gonna head into the Deco app. And I've already signed in, so let's begin. So now we're going to choose the model we have. Here I have the X20. As you can see, there are quite a few different options available. So to begin, you only need to set up one and then you can set up the others later. And then we're going to plug in the first point to the modem and then we're going to plug it in into the wall. So next power on the deco and it should be pulsing blue. Okay, it's pulsing blue. Allow for location access. Because I've plugged them all in, we now need to head into the Wi-Fi, and we need to connect to the one that we want to use. So that is this one right here. And now we're gonna choose where this is going to be. So I'm actually gonna put this in the network room. And here you can change the type of connection. And now we're going to keep the default MAC ID, or you could manually enter the MAC address. Now we are going to create our Wi-Fi name. And now this is really important. If you already have a bunch of devices connected to Wi-Fi, you may want to choose the same name and password so that all of those devices reconnect to the new Wi-Fi. If you wanna start from scratch and if you want it to be more secure, you would wanna choose a new name with a new password. That just means you're gonna to have to go through and reset all your devices and connect them to the new Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Wi-Fi name that I'm currently using with the same password. Make sure you turn off your old router first before you connect this or it will have a problem creating that network. So now that it's created my network, I'm going to select next. And here you can see the light has turned to green. And now we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi that it is producing. All right, now our phone is connected to our new router. And there it automatically added the Wi-Fi points. So here you can see they turned green as well. 
If you didn't have them set up already, you would then just go and plug them in and it would get connected at this point. And then right here, we can add more Deco devices if we need to. And here it is showing my network and it is showing the current device that is connected. And most likely you'll receive info about a firmware update. So we're going to do that now. And it will just be using your internet connection to download that update, not your mobile connection from your phone. And here in my Wi-Fi settings, I am now connected back to my new Wi-Fi and you'll see a six by it. That is showing that I am connected over Wi-Fi six. Now here I'm using the Galaxy S21 Ultra and it does support Wi-Fi six. And there are quite a few new Samsung phones that support that as well. So let's go ahead and run a speed test right now. And there you go, we have 866 down, we have 894 megabits per second up, and I'm currently paying for one gigabits of connection. So that's pretty good. Now that I have everything set up, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the proper location in my home, connecting the router to my main location that connects to the modem, and then connect it to my switch. And then we're gonna add the other Wi-Fi points in other locations into the home. So here is my current network setup. Now I do have Nest Wi-Fi with one point. It's worked well, but the one thing it doesn't have is Wi-Fi 6, so I'm excited to try out the new X20 system. So now let's go ahead and remove the old router. We might hear some screams once I disconnect the internet. And so here I'm going to first plug in the modem, which is right here with the blue cable. But we're gonna do that first. And then next, this second one is plugged into my TP-Link a 16 port switch here. So that's going to be plugged in right here. So all of my other wired devices do have access to internet as well. And I'm just gonna put that in the spot too. Now we're gonna plug that in. It's also a good idea to reboot the switch after plugging in your router. And now let's move to the other locations. So I set the main point on the lower level in the middle of the home. And with the second point, I'm gonna put it on the upper level on one side of the home. And then the third point, I'm gonna put the opposite, the second point on the main level so that we have great internet no matter what side of the home we are on. So after being plugged into the new location, it just took a minute and now it is showing that we have Wi-Fi. So here in the app, if we tap internet, it's now showing that all of my different router points are online. And now we are seeing all of my different devices connect to the new network. As you can see, I have quite a few. If a device is not connecting like you want it to, I would go in and forget the network and then connect back to the new network. So now that my phone is connected, I'm connected over Wi-Fi 6. Let's go ahead and run a speed test to see what kind of Wi-Fi speeds I'm getting. Now we are using a lot of Wi-Fi in this room, so this will typically be the amount of distance we are from the point and will be our typical Wi-Fi speeds. Now I pay for one gigabit per second down and one gigabit per second up, but it would be nice to see a little bit higher speeds here since I am on Wi-Fi 6. Now it's time for a good old fashioned wired speed test. And that is pretty impressive. I do pay for one gigabit per second down, but I'm getting 912 megabits per second download. And my upload comes in at 943 megabits per second upload. And that is the fastest I have seen on this computer. If I go to my results, come down here, you can see that the last few tests have done really awesome. And the previous test before that, I was never able to get, okay, I did once. Um, but I wasn't able to consistently get that 900 megabits per second, which I have been able to do since upgrading to the TP-Link X20. Now let's take a look at some of the other settings in the Deco app. Here, when we tap the internet, we can see the different points. So we have the main Deco point, and then we have the other points where we can come in here and adjust the name. We can also see the download and upload that's happening on that point. And then down here, you can see what devices are currently meshed with that, which I think is really cool. You can see what's here. And then you can also turn off the access to the internet on certain devices. And then up here, you can also reboot each point. We can remove it and get support. And then up here at the top, we do have the option to add a network or add a second point if we want to. But if we go into the menu here, we have some pretty cool things. So here we have what's called Deco Lab. So this helps you run through a diagnostic on your network to make sure everything 
is running smoothly. So let's go ahead and run the diagnostics. So it says my Wi-Fi network is strong. There's no malware or anything happening. It's testing the internet speed to see what we're getting. And now it's testing my ping to different websites. So how quickly it can connect to them. And then it's seeing if there is any Wi-Fi interference and now it is complete. So here you can see everything that it showed there. So then if you go back, you can select the down arrow and here you have a few more specific tests you can do. So one is you have a speed test here. You can choose your server. And while you're doing a speed test, you can just play this fun little car game. Not sure how helpful that is, but there is my current speed test. So then you have these other options. You can detect cameras, scan for devices, ping tests, public IP lookup, Mac lookup, open port checker, Wi-Fi interference. So actually this is pretty interesting. When I did the Wi-Fi interference, it said that I was getting a lot of Wi-Fi interference and that's because I still had my Nest Wi-Fi point connected. So it was sending out a Wi-Fi signal that wasn't working. So I unplugged it and then it came up with this low Wi-Fi interference where previously it was showing medium. So it's really cool that you can see if there are any other networks uh, nearby that may be on the same signal and that would cause some interference. So right now, everything is looking great. In the settings, we also have the Friends of Deco. So here we can connect it to IFTTT and we can connect it to Amazon Assistant. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So here there is a TP-Link router skill and then we're going to choose our product. And then we have the option to choose our priority devices. So this would help us turn on the Wi-Fi on our favorite devices and prioritize them over the rest of the network. And you can do this all by voice. Now we also need to go into the Amazon Assistant app, and then we're gonna go under more, skills and games, and then we're gonna search for TP-Link. And right here, we have the TP-Link router, and then we're going to sign in with our account. When we select view new devices, here we have our new router. And so it just shows up in here, but now we do have access for voice commands where we can then prioritize the devices we've set in the Deco app. Open TP-Link Router. Okay, here's TP-Link Router. Welcome to TP-Link Router Skill. Give commands to change settings on your TP-Link device that supports Alexa. Here are a few things you may say. Turn off the LEDs. Enable night mode. Enable my guest network. You may also say stop if you want me to stop what I am doing. What would you like to do? Pause kids profile. Sorry, I still can't understand you. So it looks like this model does not support pausing certain devices, but you can say things like turn on the guest network, you can turn on and off the lights, you can also ask it to turn on WPS so you can connect a device quickly, and you can enable night mode, as well as prioritize different devices and run a speed test. So let's try this out. Ask TP-Link to turn off the lights. The lights are now off. Now let's dive into the free home care feature. So here with the antivirus, you have the option to protect your Wi-Fi. So you can protect from malicious content, you have the intrusion prevention, and you have infected device quarantine. So you just push the button up here and it enables them all. So this will help keep your mesh system the most secure. Next we have parental controls. So here you can add different parental controls. Let's go ahead and add one for the kids. And so here you can choose filter level. You have child, preteen, teen, adult. So depending on what you choose, it will then filter content down here. And then you also have the option to block specific apps as well as websites. So let's go ahead and choose preteen, select next. Then you have the option for time limits. So we can set it so weekdays, it's limited on time and here I can adjust how much time per day. And then I also have the option for weekends. So if weekends I wanna give them a little more time, I am able to do that. So it's nice that you have those controls right there. And then here you can select what days are and are not the weekends. So you can simply choose those. So maybe Fridays are okay. Um, I could add that down here to the weekend and select done. And then you also have the option for bedtime up here. So I set this where school nights, bedtime is going to start at 6 p.m. So that means they don't get access to their devices the night before those days. So a Sunday night to Thursday night, they won't be able to um, use those devices and then it will turn back on at 7 a.m. And then here I want a Friday to be a weekday because I don't want them using the internet on Thursday night, select done and then select save and now it will block the internet 
every day at 6 p.m. So we're going to select next, and now we're going to choose the devices we want to have on this profile. And this is where it comes in handy if you have labeled all of the devices on your network. So we've added their devices, we're going to select done, and you can add up to 16 devices per profile. And then if I want to at any time, I can come in here and just tap the pause, and it will pause the internet on those devices. Is it not working? It is. This one is not. It's not? This one is not. It's broken. Now when trying to name your devices, one helpful tip is to look what device is currently using data. If it's not using data, go ahead and play a video, and then you can easily see which one you then need to label, and then you can easily add it into a profile so that you can pause it whenever you need to. Oh, I'm in best house too. Almost, I can practically taste it. Dada. Oh, did I do that? Yeah. Now under their profile, after unpausing it, it didn't turn back on because here it is showing they actually had reached their three hour time limit. And then here it is showing what the devices have been connecting to and where they spent their most time. So it's just showing these web URLs where it's streaming from. So um, we're streaming from YouTube and then um, some other services on those devices. And here in the insights, I also have the option to go back and see what they have used the other days. Now other days I didn't have certain devices logged in their profile, so it's not showing that. But now that I have their main devices, I'll be able to keep track of how much internet is actually being used and then limit it right from here which is kind of nice because the TV has a terrible parental controls option. So it's great that I have the options here. And now I can go under monthly report, I can go to the kids and I can see what their devices are accessing and see if they have accessed any restricted content. And then last you have quality of service. So here in the QoS menu, you do have the option to prioritize different types of internet usage. So if you wanna prioritize gaming or streaming or chatting, you do have that option and you can come in here to the settings and you can actually adjust uh, them right here. So here we can have gaming be high priority or you could have downloading or maybe streaming and gaming not so much. So it's nice that you have all of those controls right there. And then under high priority, you can see what devices you currently have linked. You can add more and clear your devices there. And then you can also set for just a specific duration in which you may want to give that device priority. Now under the settings here, we have the option to change our Wi-Fi. So if you wanna turn off the 2.4 or the five gigahertz network, you can do that. You can adjust your Wi-Fi name and password. You can simply share your Wi-Fi information. And then here you do have the option to turn on a guest network where you can choose its own SSID as well as choosing a password and the type of security you may want to use on here, which I definitely recommend adding uh, some security on that guest network just so anyone can't join your network. There you have the internet speed test. Now let's go ahead and run this right from the speed test app. Now that's some pretty awesome results. I actually ran the speed test just a bit ago and I got 393 on download, which I've never received before. So that Wi-Fi 6 is definitely doing its job. And then there you can see just barely I got the 319 upload as my max speed. And here are the speeds I was getting before with my Nest Wi-Fi. So not quite the same. Uh, so it's definitely nice to have that new Wi-Fi 6 speeds. Now here you have the option to blacklist certain devices that you don't want to connect to your network. Maybe a kid has an iPad, you don't want them to connect to Wi-Fi, you can come in here and blacklist their device. Under advanced settings, you have a lot of settings here, which I honestly don't understand a lot of this. Um, if there's anything I need to know about, please let me know. Um, but here you have the option for LED control. So there you can see the green light on the point, you have the option to come in here and simply turn off the LED, or you can set night mode on, where with night mode, it will automatically turn off the LED at night and then turn back on in the morning, so you can know the status of your Wi-Fi is working. And then down here, you have the option for connection alerts, so you will be notified once you set this up every time somebody joins your network. Not the best thing, so I recommend coming in here, and I'm going to turn off those push notifications. So I'm not gonna be notified every time a new device joins. 
And then if you wanted to know every time something goes online or offline, you do have the option for those notifications there. And then last here, you do have notifications for the app. So you can be notified when a update is available or when the security is updated or antivirus, parental controls, monthly report. So here you can adjust what does and does not notify you. So those are the advanced settings. Then we have WPS, so this will help you link certain products to specific points. Then you can see your monthly report of usage. We can sort by this month, last month, and then here it's showing the previous month. And then you can come down here and you can see different places that have been used on that profile's devices. So here we can see the kids, what those devices are using, and then here you can see any restricted content that would have been tried to visit. And so here I can see that there was one website I went to today that could have been restricted. If you tap on a website, it then gives you the option to just search and it will just search that term on Google or you can block that type of content for that profile. And then if we scroll down, here you have a total devices connected each day. So here we can see that the last two days, I've had 68 devices. Now again, this supports up to 150 devices at a time, which is pretty awesome. And then here we have a list of devices down at the bottom. And then last, you do have the option to add managers to your Wi-Fi. Now I have not been able to find a data usage chart or graph. It was really nice to have on my Nest Wi-Fi, but I have not been able to find that here on the Deco app. So I'm excited to see what this will look like after a month of use. Now let's do a bandwidth test. So I'm just going to load up a bunch of videos on all of my devices and see if everything is still able to run 4K without any issues. Check that 4K box. All right, on to the next device. Play Wally. -E. Playing Wally -E on Google Play Movies and TV. All right, that's working. Play Back to the Future. Here's Back to the Future. Play iRobot. Play Back to the Future 2. Here's Back to the Future Part 2, 4K UHD. Play Smart House from Disney Plus. Okay, playing Smart House on Disney Plus. <laughs> it's after me. Play Tech with Brett from YouTube. Playing Tech with Brett on YouTube. Here on Tech with Brett, I have tried and tested all kinds of different smart speakers and all right, we got one more to set up. Charger tablet, kids. And let's load up one more. Here I'm gonna play some Google Stadia, which takes up a bit of bandwidth. So let's see how it holds up. And we can come in here and check out our connection. And there you can see that everything is green. We have an excellent connection with no issues, even with all the other data that's being used on the network. And so while all the streams are going on, we can come into the app and here we can see how much data they are currently using. If we tap on a device, if we want one to work better than the other, so maybe here with Stadia, I want it to work better, I could set high priority. Now it would be nice if there was a way to sort by what devices are currently using the most data, but I have not been able to find that. And so here you can see that on the main router, we are using 62 megabits per second down and two megabits per second up. In the bedroom here, we're doing 49 or 77 megabits per second down with only a few kilobits per second up. And then here in the kitchen, we are jumping around 23 megabits per second down. And here are the devices that are connected to that node. So it's really nice that you do see all of those options. And up in here, you do have the notifications. So it's gonna notify you if new devices have been detected or if there's different updates that have happened. So it's nice that you have a record here of what has joined the network. So if you know something just barely joined, like here we have the Chromecast Ultra that is joined. I then have the option to adjust the name here if I wanted to, or I can actually set this as the high priority device as that's what we are using. Now here it does want me to set a bandwidth um, to have the best possible. So let's go ahead and do a speed test on the device. So now we have our total bandwidth available. So we can then select save. And now we have set the Chromecast Ultra as a priority device. 
And when you have set high priority on a device, it will show up here at the top of the list. So you could add just your favorite devices there so you can easily see where they are. Now, all those streams are taking up some bandwidth, but I'm still at 775 megabits per second down, which is just epic. Now with a good download speed and the X20 system, you shouldn't have any problems watching some videos on a bunch of different devices. So here when I come in my Nest camera, it loads up pretty instantly, but usually it will take a second for the rest of the data to load. And with this new Wi-Fi, I have noticed it is instant. As soon as I go in here, I can see that as I scroll through, you can see all of the history there. That's interesting. Anyway, so as we scroll through, you can see just how quickly it is able to load that. And then that goes away as soon as I stop. So everything has just been way more snappy since getting the X20. So far, this mesh system is working amazing in my home. But what if your home has never had great Wi-Fi? Maybe you have a device where it works great right next to the router, but you go into your bedroom and you're not getting great Wi-Fi. Well, if you do have thick walls, the mesh Wi-Fi is not able to penetrate the rooms in your house very well. So this actually comes with a feature to help that, and that's called Ethernet Backhaul. Now, if you don't use a switch like me where I have all these devices plugged in, one thing you can do is take the second port on your main router, then you can have ethernet go to the first plug on the next point. Then you can have another ethernet cable that goes from that point to the last point, giving them all a dedicated ethernet connection. Now, because I do have a switch is how I have this set up, is I have the internet plugged into the router, and then I have a cable plugged into the switch. And now I have these other cables that are actually wired through the home to the other locations where I have the other points. Then all I need to do is plug them in. And now each of these points will have dedicated ethernet connection. So then they are able to broadcast their own signal. Now, once you do this, it does disable the mesh network, but each of these points are acting as an access point to the same SSID internet connection. So that means you can still roam through your home and stay connected to the internet, but now you do have a stronger signal. Now right here is where one of the ethernet connections come to. So all I need to do is plug in an ethernet cable there and then plug it into the back of the point right here in number one. You will need to pick up a few other ethernet cables for this option. Now once plugged in, you can see that the light turns red and then it slowly turns green. And that's because initially it's turning off the mesh Wi-Fi, and now it is in ethernet backhaul mode and it does that all automatically. Now here in the Deco app, we can see we have our network room. So here it's showing the devices that are meshed to it. So meaning just connected to it. If we go to our other points here in the bedroom, we can see that it is connected over ethernet. So the source is coming from the network room. And then in the kitchen here, we also show that it is connected over ethernet. And here you can see my phone is still showing Wi-Fi 6 no matter what mode I am in on my Wi-Fi. Let's see if that improved the speed test from yesterday. Taking a look at the switch, we see that our ethernet cable here is showing orange, which means it's only getting a hundred megabits per second. So I'm gonna swap out this RJ45 connector and then check the other end. And it looks like we found our culprit here. One of the positions is not wired correctly. So let's put that in and check again. And now we are showing two greens, which means we are getting the 1000 megabits per second to each point. Oh yeah! Now that's the speed I was expecting to get. Now on other devices, that means that when you are connected to the new points, you will have a much faster speed. As you can see here, things are working pretty well. But the great thing about having that ethernet backhaul is I can also use the second port on the point and plug in an ethernet cable. So here I've plugged one in and then I have a dongle here that I can plug into my computer. And now I have a direct connection to the switch to my internet. So instead of going over Wi-Fi. I am directly connected and let's do another speed test here. And so there while plugged in, I'm not getting as good as I was getting over Wi-Fi, but this all depends on what devices you have. But another cool thing is you could also plug a switch 
into here so then you can get internet to multiple devices in this room instead of them all depending on Wi-Fi. And again, that's all depending on what you are using in your setup. And this is really helpful if you do have maybe a bigger home or you also have a home that the Wi-Fi can't penetrate the walls very good. This is a very great option for that. Now those were the speeds from a Pixelbook Go. Let's go ahead and try a MacBook Pro. There we go. Now the last way to use the X20 system is in access point mode. So here we have the internet coming into our router and then we're going to plug each of the points into the router and they're going to act as an access point with a Wi-Fi connection. Now when you do this, you do need to go into the settings of the Wi-Fi and switch the operation mode from router to access point mode. Now when you use this, certain features like the parental controls and the quality of service are not supported. Here's a diagram to help you understand the difference. Now the last thing to test would be coverage. Now I do have a pretty good size home, but my walls are pretty paper thin, so I've never really had any problems with Wi-Fi coverage around the house, but I think that out here is one of the main problems. I might use Wi-Fi and I just don't have coverage. So let's go ahead and do a test, see if I am getting a good signal out here. So here you can see a little ways away from the home and I am so far at full bars without any issue. Previously with my Nest Wi-Fi, I'd come out here and I couldn't find a signal sometimes or the handoff between inside and outside was pretty rough and I couldn't go very far. So let's go ahead, just walk a little bit up the street and uh, see how it's going. Stop, wait for it to update. Okay, we're across the street in the neighbor's yard. Let's go ahead and try and play a video out here. All right, that was a bit too far. It did disconnect. Let's see when I connect. All right, so we are connected back just barely across the street. And it loads there without any issue. So I'd say that's some pretty good coverage even going through the walls of the house to be able to still have internet out here. Now that's really handy if you're doing yard work, listening to earbuds with your phone, something like that, you definitely need good coverage outside. And so I would say this is definitely an improvement from the system I was using before. And that Wi-Fi 6, I feel like has taken that a little bit further. I am very impressed with what the TP-Link X20 mesh Wi-Fi system can do. We have a ton of different devices with smart home and just other devices we're using throughout the day. And I had no issues with this being able to quickly download data and load up on whatever device we were using. With my Nest Wi-Fi, it always seemed like there was some sort of bottleneck where it just couldn't give me the info as fast as I would like. It would eventually load, but it did have a slight delay on all of the different devices that we were we're using. Many times the kid would, the kids would come and say, hey, dad, the Wi-Fi is not working. And so, you know, I'd have to see if there was any problem and eventually it would just load. But I haven't experienced that at all here with this new system. I feel like there is a lot more power behind it or just maybe a faster processor. And because I do have three points instead of the two, it is able to handle all of that a lot better. I also love having that backhaul ethernet so that I can then plug in all of the points and they have the best Wi-Fi at more locations in the home. I wired these a while ago and I was just waiting for a time in which I could use it. So it's nice that I have done all that. Now, my only real complaint about this whole system is you don't get the data on how much data you have been using for the day or for the month. With the Nest Wi-Fi, that is something that was just added into the Google Home app and it gives you this really cool chart that you can quickly see how much data you were using. But other than that, I've loved everything else about this. I think the parental controls are great. I love how easy it is to set up the time limits for certain devices and I can go in and pause that and I can go in and restrict different uh, settings and it makes it super easy to use with the Deco app. And so if you are looking to upgrade your current router system or you're looking to add a better router system to your home, I can highly recommend the TP-Link X20 system. With these three points, I had plenty of coverage in my home. I do have a little bit smaller home, but I don't think you would have an issue as long as you're under that 6,000 square footage range. 
If you are having any issues after that, you can go and buy just one point and add another point into other dead spots in your home. And you can keep adding those. You probably don't need too many more, but that would work where you can then add more Wi-Fi into your home. Now, TP-Link has actually been nice enough to give all of you a discount. I'll leave uh, details about that in the description below where you can check that out on Amazon. And if you have any further questions about this system, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see how I set up my switch and connected it all to my system, you can check out the video over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.